Hello, welcome, welcome to my apartment, my tea room. The gong, seven times for many people, five times for four people or less, numbers right off. So my lecture today, I really wish we could be together so that I could share your thoughts about uh, what, uh, I have been finding in measurements, numbers and ratios, relationships between objects. When you first are told to sit down and have tea, your teacher says, sit 16 spaces, tatami spaces from the heady. Well, I always thought that was Eight, sun, sun, measurement. Shaku is like our foot. Well, we'll get into it. But uh, in the Machiai, <coughs> excuse me, in the Machiai, this is my Machiai. We're sort of in it right now. There's a few other things as well. But it's uh, wanting to be the theme or to sort of set the theme for the tea presentation. Most important object outside of the tea itself is the hanging scroll, the kakemono in the tokonoma. So that really is your main event, uh, the main idea, the concept of it. And so you want to have something that's a kind of introduction to that idea, that concept. And so today is uh, Cha Zen Ichi Ni. T Zen One Tastes. It's an expression that your teacher told you probably very, very early on. And I think those of you who have studied Zen a little bit, I know that was my first introduction to Japanese culture in general, was through Zen flesh, Zen bone. So Zen is there, and Zen is Buddhist. Tea is certainly has its Buddhist aspects, but it is essentially social with ethics involved in it. So cha, zen, ichimi. Well, why did I pick that? It was a concept that was with the abbot, the 90th abbot of Daitokuji, who was Dairin Soto. And his student was Take no Jo. And Take no Jo was the teacher of Senorikyu. So this is really in our family lineage. Also, it starts with the number one. We always have to start with the number one. And if you were with me last week, and uh, in my pitiful drawing, uh, the, writing the character for Cha, which is uh, on our slide, Cha may be numbers that total 108. And those are the 108 uh, feelings that we have that probably shouldn't have. So we want to get rid of those and we uh, strike the great temple gong, the temple bell, sorry, to get rid of them or help get rid of them or remind us. But let's, uh, the, 
writing is by Yamaguchi Endo. And when I met him at Manshuin, which is a temple in Kyoto, it was an imperial villa and then it became a temple. And it has one of the three famous Kyoto tea rooms in it, and it's the Hasso Ken. Eight window eve. Eve is uh, the overhang of the roof. It's often a name of a small hut. Uh, Konichi An is a hut, and it's sometimes called a cha seki tea seat. And uh, eight windows, hasso. It also, because it's a temple, refers to the eight aspects of the Buddha. So it's a little more complicated than that. He has written on the uh, Shikishi, hasso on, sorry, hasso Cha Seki and Manshu In, you can see there. Well, let's look at Shikishi for a moment. Uh, this is in a kua paper mulberry frame. Lots of things were made with uh, kua wood. And the Shikishi is uh, not square. Well, why is it not square? That's boring, is it? Well, some things are, that are square are boring, but this is nine shaku, sorry, nine sun by eight sun. Nine shaku would fill up the whole room. Nine sun by eight sun. And if you uh, were better at math than I am, you would probably easily see that that is a ratio of 10 to eight, 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 eight. 10 point eight, 10 and eight. Uh, quite, quite remarkable when I discovered that. Uh, we looked at uh, Tanzaku last time and they have interesting numbers, but not as really interesting as that. Uh, we have a nine by 12, uh, eight by 10, uh, three by five. I think those little yellow cards were three by five. Some, somewhere along the way they became a standard. And uh, so, cha zen ichi me. And let us then uh, look at the kanji for zen. Uh, on the left is uh, the more formal writing, and uh, it's composed of two parts. And on the right, is show or to discover or reveal. And the character on the right is one. That's rather strange, don't you think? Show one, show, reveal. And below are the various characters, the character more simply written and its parts that have been reduced. So if you know only one character, you might not actually know the other character. So if you only know the simplified version, you probably don't know the more complicated version. So let's go to the tokonoma. And this is uh, a scroll really changed my perception of Zen and tea. I knew about the circle and uh, the characters, but let's first look at the tokonoma itself. The hanging scroll is called a horizontal piece, a yokomono. And then you can put your formal hanaire right in front of it. If it's long, then the formal hanaire should go to the left. So the hanaire is Korean, purchased at my 
well, a few years ago now at my market where that had the best gyoza that I could find in the Boston area. And it's on a board. And the board has a groove around the perimeter. And I think that that refers to a style of altar, Buddhist altar, that has the profile somewhat of an hourglass. And it refers specifically to the mountain at the center of the world, the center of the Buddhist world, of Mount Sumeru. Mount Sumeru. But we'll go into that another day. So let's take a little bit closer look at the kakemono itself. This is written by a Chinese person. It's mounted in an absolutely Japanese style. It uh, was a bit of a surprise to me when I realized that it was a Chinese author. The circle, nothing. It's kind of zero, it doesn't actually mean that, but it certainly does imply. And then our writing, our calligraphy, uh, Yanagi, Midori, and then left, Hana, Kurenai. Willow, green, flower, red. I've written pages and pages, which I won't go into here, maybe later on. Uh, the willow is green and the flower is red. Well, it's sort of like what it is in nature, but the phrases, Yanagi wa Midori, comes from, uh, as do the others, comes from the Ju Gyu Zu, the ten ox pictures. And it's a metaphor of discovering the self. And it uh, is a tale of a boy who had an ox, it went away, and he looks for it, finds traces, sees it, acknowledges it, takes it home, and things sort of return to nothing. And then things go back the way they used to be, but they're slightly changed. So Yanagi wa Midori comes from picture three, and Hanakura and I comes up, when I say comes from, these are commentaries about the pictures and Confucius wrote his own uh, interpretations of what these meant. And so uh, Hanakura and I is from the commentary on picture nine. Well, the circle, the empty space is picture eight. So in fact, this is the progression of beginning to understand. Understanding, it's not all that unusual. And then back to the normal state of your life, but you've changed. Picture 10 shows Hote going off to the market, but he's got his wine bottle with him and a little boy is looking up. It's a wonderful, uh, complicated uh, thing to understand. But I want you to keep in mind the hanging straps, the fu tai, those have been a problem for a very long time. A problem uh, for me, at least, to understand what they are. And I think, and we'll go into it, if you remember from last time, we looked at uh, Tanka in my altar and it had red ribbons that uh, hung down in front of a veil, which concealed the picture behind it, which was a picture of a kind of paradise, a Buddhist paradise. There are so many aspects to the uh, scroll. I could really spend a very long time. Let me give you uh, his name, which is Wang Jun. Sheng, pardon my pronunciation. Uh, because it's such a Japanese style mounting, he may, uh, I don't know, he may have been working in Japan. But sometimes we find things at a reasonable price, yes, and we can afford them, and we don't know much more about them than that. 
try to learn as much as possible for, uh, for your own edification. Try to know, because there are, uh, shall we say, imitations that were meant to deceive. This was never meant to deceive, never entered my mind. But let's take a look at the wonderful drawing that Anthony Crasso has turned into a rather excellent diagram. And we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about numbers. Uh, in amongst all these wonderful details, there's a five in the middle. And it's a little like Sudoku, which has taken over part of the world, not mine. My mind doesn't work that way. And each square of the nine squares has a number in it. And one is near the tokobashira up at the top, and nine is at the bottom. And the sort of odd numbers, not the sort of, the odd numbers make a cross, and the even numbers, two, four, six, eight, are the corners. The magic square. Each way that you tally the numbers is 15, 15. The room itself, it varies tremendously. The room of uh, Sotan, called the Yuin, is based on Rikyu's principles, sizes, etc. The ceiling, the, from the floor to the ceiling, is Go Shaku Kyusun, not Rokshaku. Not Rokshaku. One might think, oh, six feet, you know, six feet. But it isn't six feet. It's five feet, nine inches, we might say. Well, what is that all about? Well, you might say Goku, five, nine, Goku. And Goku could be another word, wordplay on Goku Raku. But it's approximately nine feet square. That sort of standard tatami. Kyoto tatami are slightly larger and they're measured with the kujira jaku, which is larger. So let's say that it's nine feet square. It was a wonderful, famous, famous book. Uh, the hut of Yuima called the Yoho something or other. Sorry, my mind suddenly went a blank there. It's really not 10 feet square, it's nine feet square. And nine is the great magic number. And so it's nine feet to the wall. Tatami are three by six feet. I know slightly different for ease of my ease of uh, talking about it. Let's keep it as simple as possible. Well, the tokonoma is half the width of the wall. So that's 4.5. And its depth is one half of its width. So it's two squares side by side. Well, it's as though you took a four panel screen that was nine feet long and made it into a tiny room. Tokonoma means uh, bedroom or floor room, a little higher than the rest of the room because it's for an elevated person or an elevated concept, something higher than we are. Well, if the tokonoma is nine, has a wall space that's nine feet, those of you who have studied uh, Zen might remember the Dharma sat in a cave near Shouling or Shaolin Temple. And he sat there facing the wall, Menpeki facing the wall for nine years. I don't know, it seems interesting to say the least. Numbers, numbers. Uh, could we have a picture of the Shaku and the two Shaku? 
the top, they are both shaku. The top shaku is about our foot, a Western foot. And the one below it is the kujira jaku. The upper one, kane jaku, which means to bend, and kujira jaku, which means to, uh, means whale, as in the sea creature. And it is, each is divided into 10 parts, each in 10 parts. And they are sun. There are 10 sun to a shaku. And a sun is divided into bu. The kanji for bu is also pronounced bung. And that may be of import later on. And then each bu is divided into 10 din, which are, as you can understand, quite small. The kujira jaku is longer than the kane jaku, but has the same measurement. The kane jaku is eight sun of the kujira, so the two measuring sticks, the monozashi, they relate to each other 10 to 8. And that will appear again and again. Going back to your teacher saying, sit 16 spaces from the heady. Well, I always thought it was hasun, as I said, but you have to include the heady. And 16 tatami me is 7.7 .7 sun kane. Are you getting the picture? So if you add the heady, it's 8.8. .8. So 16 is 7.8. Sorry, I misspoke. 7.8. So we add the heady, which is one sun. So it's 8.8 .8 sun kanejaku. And you know that 8.8 .8 is 88 and 88 is the character for rice starting in the center and going out in eight directions just like the lines that were imposed superimposed on the yojohan that is uh, something can be applied everywhere everywhere you are at the center of your world your sensu is an eight when you uh, hold up your sensu, it's an eight upside down. This one is from Hoon Sai, the year of the rat. The year of the rat. We are in the year of the rat. And now it's a number eight because it's one eighth of a circle. Sort of. And it's Suihiro from here out to forever. Sign of infinity. So our next image will be the, uh, well, the hangi. I knocked on it. Uh, when a person arrives for tea, outside the doorway would be a wooden board with a mallet nearby. And you would knock once, only once. Not much noise, but the host can hear it. It's fairly near uh, the activity of the host. Those of you who can read kanji, this is from Konnichi An, and it was a meal tray for a New Year's meal, the year of the tiger. And I'm a year of the tiger. So I thought rather than just keeping it for uh, snacks, food, Sweets, of course, higashi, the great, great higashi bone. And it has the sign of the tiger, which took me years to figure out how to read it. It's uh, rather artful. In the kaiseki meal, there is a course called the hasun because the tray measures hasun square. It's plain wood, it's cedar, 
has a little gallery around it. And it's rounded at the corners, but it is called a square. Uh, yes. And this board, it's in the shape of an emma. And the emma is a Shinto, primarily a Shinto device that is uh, donated originally long ago, and I guess probably rich people even, now I shouldn't say rich people, people now would offer a horse to a Shinto shrine. And that got to be a little out of uh, means for a, an ordinary person, so they would offer a picture of a horse, a e ma, a picture horse. Well, eventually they turned into wonderful little souvenirs, yes, souvenirs, that are uh, small and say your child is going to have an exam and well let's go to the shrine and get an emma and then write your onagai your asking your prayer maybe and then leave it at the shrine well i have collected a few of them over the years and this was given to us uh, at the new year's dinner uh, sorry, lunchtime, lunch. And I thought I will use that as a uh, my hangi, my hanging board to knock on. Well, these hangi come from Buddhist temples, and rather than shouting out or using a other means of communication, they would knock on the, the board. And some of them have been knocked on quite a lot, and they're practically knocked through. And they're several shaku, can be several shaku thick. Uh, some of them are portable. That's why there's a rope on it. You can hang it up, and I have. And that mallet that uh, came with the bell that I have, which I uh, purchased at Mi Dera on Joji the great temple on Lake Biwa. And I thought, oh, I want a long, beautiful kua wood hammer mallet for my bell. And I put this mallet aside. And then when I fashioned the hangi, I thought, oh, I've got that mallet. And it makes a nice sound. It makes a nice sound. Let me go make the sound. And I'm going to do a little side trip here. The Matsukaze was interfering with uh, Dora ringing. And I'm at the Hangi now. The mallet is also hanging. So the guests have arrived. It's not rectangular, nothing wrong with rectangles and nothing wrong with squares, but why is it five-sided? Well, five is a better number than four. You know, people say, oh, four is an unlucky number because it sounds like death. Well, we have the four seasons and we have the four guardian kings of Buddhism. They are everywhere. But gokaku, five corners, gokaku, triangle, the angle, we're talking about the angles, not the sides, but the angles. So the gokaku, there is wordplay, which is status gather. Not exactly a great translation, but uh, it's equanimity. It's better luck better luck next time. So let's get into some chadogu and I have a wonderful natsume. It is a true natsume and it has gourds on it. I think those of you who understand and know Chano Yu know that Gourds was a very favorite motif of Tantansai, the uh, grandfather of Zabosai, Iemoto, Hounsai's father. And there are six of them. We can only see a few. 
and there are six chords. Well, six is a number of infinity in time, eight infinity in space. So six chords, mu, byo, mu, byo, mu, byo, sounds to the Japanese, I'm not making this up, sounds to the Japanese like not sick. So it's a talisman for good health. And it's on T. Tantan Sai had Mubyo everywhere, designs everywhere. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I went to Japan not too long after Tantan Sai uh, joined the Angels and became somewhat close as one could to his wife, Kayoko sama. And she was very, very kind to me over the years. And her daughter, Shiotsuki Yaeko, not too long ago joined the Angels. She said, my mother liked you, so I like you. Wasn't that wonderful? Kayoko sama was truly one of the great ladies. She was an imposing figure. Uh, I didn't know her when she was uh, much younger, uh, but she was wise and wonderful. So when I see Mu Byo, the lacquering is interesting. It's certainly certainly interesting enough. It's uh, Miyata Soke, who does many, many things. He's very prolific. But when I see uh, Mu Byo, six chords, I don't usually think of not sick, but I think of Tantan Sai, whom I never knew personally, but I knew his wife and his family. Our next uh, numbered object is a uh, kogo, and it is uh, small. <laughs> These are uh, kogo incense containers are uh, often quite small. But this, with the concentric rings, is modeled after a temple incense container. And those incense containers would have crumbled incense, uh, almost like saw, uh, coarse sawdust, so that you would take a pinch and put it on top of a piece of burning charcoal. Like my hiire right here, I won't digress. Uh, this is just two sun across, two sun, and, uh, but that isn't the sort of fun part of it. Uh, if you can see it clearly enough, it's got seven rings on top and five rings on the side. Well, that's hinting at the next number down, which would be san, shichi go san, and they are, ages when a child attains any of either or both of all of those ages they are uh, brought to a shrine and get special blessings at three used to be girls of three boys of five and girls and sometimes boys at seven you wanted to have, in traditional Japanese culture, you wanted to have a, a girl child first, and then a boy, so that she could learn how to take care of her little brother. Ichihime ni taro, first princess, daddy's little girl, and then mama's boy at five. Very sweet. Inside, are three pieces of Byakudan. So we have our three inside, Shichi, Go, San. And eventually, two of those will go into the fire in the furo, and there will be one piece left over. I still haven't quite figured out what that's all about. And now something a little bit personal on my side is a Kogo, uh, I don't do turned wood. That's at least not yet. Maybe uh, for my 88th year, I will, uh, I will start turning wood. 
take up the lathe or something. But uh, for a special occasion to celebrate the birthdays, our tiger birthdays, it was a tiger year, and it was uh, this little treasure. I'm somewhat proud of it. My skills as a potter are not all that great, but they are five tigers and they represent the five friends. Uh, when we were, well, it was a tiger year, so I guess we were 60 or 70. Well, it was a tiger year. And these tigers, they are actually higashi, rakugan, that were given to me by Mrs. Wat, this is name dropping, Mrs. Watanabe of uh, Ipodo Tea Company. She visited Boston and knew that I liked tigers and was a tiger. And I think she might be a tiger. And she gave me these rakugan, uh, pressed sugar. Well, of course, I didn't eat them. Uh, who? Well, eventually. But I worked with Stephen Murphy, who's a wonderful potter here in Boston. And he helped me make a mold and, uh, of the tigers. I didn't consume of all of them. I, I don't know how many I made, 30 or 40. I don't know. But they're just press and cut, and then he glazed them. Uh, so they are five, 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 a great number. Your hand, go, go, go yo roku in. Uh, maybe if we could have me for a moment to I, so I can show and tell so that I haven't left the room. Uh, your hand is a wonderful example of go yo roku in. The yos that can penetrate that can go into a uh, liquid or yes and then the in-betweens gotta count the outside too those are the in parts you can't get in so five is the good luck number five yo and then roku in the six negative we need the negative spaces so Ladies who have the five sun fan and men who have the roku sun fan, those numbers are to uh, complement her in and his yo. So it's not really discrimination unless you think that she got the better hand. So let's see what's next on the list. Oh, a wonderful one. Let's see if you can get this one. Uh, meaning, the meaning behind it. I think it's quite obvious, but uh, the uh, next Kogo. Yes, these, these objects, I've either made them, they were a gift, or they were really inexpensive. Yes, uh, this, again, a Kogo, and it's six-sided, but we know, well, maybe remember, that six is the number of infinity in time, sort of like the hexagons of a tortoise shell who lives 10, which lives 10,000 years. And um, pine bark, matsu kawabishi, I think that word is. Well, in this, so that's infinity in time. Uh, it also has corners and this only struck me the other day somewhat surprisingly i don't know why but each corner is a number eight it can be very well i never understood the difference between acute and what the other one was uh, but each one of those is sue hiro open-ended well the motif is uh equisitum horsetail, but these are the little baby ones that are edible if you catch them in time. And they don't last much at all, much time at all. Tiny little things, slender, they're eaten. I don't think you eat them raw, but they're usually tempura or sugared or uh, copy in uh, sort of like hard candy that one might have at Christmas. 
and they are tsukushi, tsukushi. Uh, they have characters which means earth brush, as though you could brush with their little fiddly end there. Uh, segmented, one of the oldest plants on earth. Well, they're crossed, aren't they? They're making a kind of pretend eight. So infinity in space. The wonderful irony there of something that lasts, quote, forever, and something that lasts only a couple of days. Quite, quite remarkable. And now moving on to the Gotoku, the five virtues. The Gotoku is the trivet. I think anybody, well, I would call that a trivet because it has three feet. It's a circle. Uh, this is, its diameter is two sun kane. So it's quite small. It's about two inches across. Well, the five virtues, that still is a bit of a mystery to me. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what. Uh, they include hangers and uh, so maybe you can find out and let me know. But this is the way in which it was used to support a pot or a kettle. And the legs went down into the ash. Sort of limits the size of the pot that can go on top. However, these gotoku, uh, this is bronze, gotoku, I saw in an antique store once, a whole nest, a matryoshka doll set of uh, gotoku, where the rings, one inside the other, inside the other, and inside the other. But in Riku's time, and before, and to, to this day, the kettle, the kama, could rest on the shoulders of the furo, which is sitting, well, that's the change. There's various thoughts on how this happened. Some feel that the supporting collar of the furo broke away and the kettle needed some support. And we know in tea that in the 10th month, the sort of wabi sabi broken down time of the year, that giant furo that had come from temples that their collar had broken down, rusted away, usually iron. So there wasn't any support for the kama. Kama would rest on that collar. Well, they put a gotoku inside. Now it's Riku, evidently, it's Riku who created the ceramic bowl instead of the iron or bronze furo raised it up on three legs and had it quite open and needed the gotoku. So he felt, evidently, he felt that the gotoku was needed. Well, what was that all about? Why would you need a gotoku? And rather than having the ring up, he turned it so that we would now call them the feet or the legs were up. Absolute genius. So when you are making tea and using the gotoku futaoki, when you're turning it over, you are remembering Riku. I never knew that until a few weeks, few months ago, reading on the history of, uh, of the uh, furo, the doburo, the ceramic furo. And the ash, we really now can see the ash in that open bowl furo and the two waves, the nimonji, the ash waves. And those doburo, those earthenware furo, they should be in our tradition, Urasenke tradition, on a lacquer board that has graduated lines, wide at the front and narrower at the back. Looks like you're looking out to see with the waves coming in. So again, a water motif 
three feet, three, mitsu, maybe wordplay on mizu, water. The three prongs, the three prongs of the gotoku also maybe wordplay on three. Quite wonderful. Uh, moving on, moving right along uh, to very two very specific objects that we knew, know and use in Wabi Cha, and that is the Natsume, the Rikyu Gata Chu Natsume, and the Aodake Futa Uki. And I've intentionally uh, designed this photograph so that we can see they are the same dimension, 1.8 sun kane of the Aodake Futaoki. Take no jo, Riku's teacher, his was isun rokubu, six, but Riku's is 1.8. Isun hachibu, or Ju Hachi Bu. Ju Hachi. Ju Hachi. Let me see if I can do this. Anthony, if you could, I'll try to do a better job this time. I don't know that. It, well, I see it. So, first is our Ju, which is in line. And then a yo line, that's 10. And then we add eight. Right, and we end up with tree, the kanji for tree, ju, hachi, bu. And that bu, I don't know if I can write bu. I better check my notes. Well, let's pretend I know how to write bu. And it's pronounced boom, boom. Remember if we add another eight upside down? Right, and that's rice, that's 88. Hachi ju hachi for tea picking. You know when you bow, your teacher says, put, put your hands in front of you, lay them on, on the tatami. I remember Abe sensei, pretend one hand is the floor and this is my hand. He said, just flop them on, flop them. Flop like that. Of course, he spoke in Japanese. I don't think he said flop, flop. But it should be natural, not bang down on the floor, but natural. And to make a kind of, to begin with, never to continue it, but to sort of establish your special bow is to make a triangle, which is the symbol of fire, pyramid. And then you close your thumbs in, and that's your eight. And you're on tatami, and that's an eight. So you're making 88. And then the higashi bone comes, and it's eight sun. So you have eight here, and eight here, and eight here. They're everywhere. So going back, going back to our natsume and our futaoki. Uh, it's almost too obvious. The, I think the reason that I am beating this bush to death is that when the government, within their rights, certainly anybody can do this, any government can pass laws, uh, that everyone should use centimeters. Well, you can see right now how, what is lost. So you can measure anything you want. Well, you can do anything you want. You do know that. Just don't call it that special way, it's your way. But Isun Hachibu, Ju Hachibu, they're both Ju Hachibu, but one is smaller than the other. Unbelievable. Uh, another thing that may make this perhaps a little clearer is with the Futaoki compared to an incense burner from a Buddhist temple. Now, we have in tea uh, the Hoya Koro Futaoki. This looks like it, 
In fact, our futaoki is uh, borrowed exactly from this design, this uh, object. This uh, futaoki is a row futaoki. The earlier one was for furo, where it had the, uh, the fushi near the top, which is, in fact, the bottom upside down. Well, this, right from a butsuguya, I just love that, or a bugu, bugu store, a Buddhist shop, I said, boy, that sure looks like it's going to be the height of a futaoki, meaning Ison Hachibu. And so I purchased it. And this, this object, this Hoya firehouse, Koro incense burner, futaoki. We use it as a futaoki. We turn the lid upside down and put it on top of the uh, burner itself, the sensor. But I left it off to point out that it is Ju Hachi Bu, Kanejaku. Well, Ju Hachi Bu is now in another world, and that is in the world of Buddhism. But that will take up another time. Another little personal note, if we could go on to the next Futaoki, uh, I had in uh, mind for quite some time, a futaoki of uh, the six Jizo. Uh, Jizo are the guardian of travelers. Well, I should say Jizo is the guardian of travelers and children, especially. He's lovable. He's a monk. Uh, very sweet, lovable. The children have a special uh, festival for him in summer. Uh, called Jizo Bone. Obon, uh, Lunar Obon is coming up. Next Tuesday is Tanabata, the actual Tanabata. Tanabata, seven night of the seventh moon. Nana, Nana. Tanabata, Tana, Tana is a structure, like a loom and Hata is weaving. So it is a weaver's loom, and the princess, uh, the fairy tale princess, was the daughter of the king of China, and her beau was a uh, cowboy, a uh, herder. And they fell in love, and they uh, spent too much time together, so the king said, no more together. You cannot see each other. And they pled, pleaded, and pleaded. And one night of the year, the seventh night of the seventh moon, next Tuesday, that you can meet. And uh, I guess that was the end of that every year for thousands of years. But it was a lunar event, not July 7th. But tradition is tradition is tradition. But seven, seven, and why seven? Big Dipper, seven. Well, I got off track, but Jizo is the protector, especially by the Sanzu no Gawa, the, the Japanese version of the river Styx. River in the underworld, and you have to cross it to get to the other side. And so bamboo is put out uh, on the seventh night of the seventh moon with wonderful little tanzaku trailing from them. And then that would be thrown into the river. And uh, in seven days, seven, seven, after the seventh night, we end up on the full moon. It's a lunar event. Tomorrow, well, today in Japan, is the sort of vaguely entitled sh show show, extreme uh, end of heat. It's the extremity of the heat. And I was watching the Japanese news recently and it was 40 in Tokyo. I remember it, living in Kyoto, I it was 41 at Shijo Kawaramachi and the 
line painted down the street was uh, wavy. So Jizo protects us, and there are six realms in which he appears. The bottom one is hell, and the top one is heaven. So there is one for each of those realms, six realms. Uh, these, I made these at a challenging time in my life. I guess everybody always has those. Uh, but I drew a picture of what I wanted. I was talking to Gary Cadwallader in Kyoto, and he's a metaller, metalist. He makes things out of metal. And uh, I said, would you, how about making me a met metal uh, Rokujizo? And I drew a picture, and it's in my, uh, my travel diary. Well, I made these, that was in 1999. And in 2008, I worked with Stephen and, and made these. And Jizo means earth treasure, or preserving the earth until the coming of Maitreya, the sort of uh, savior of the world in Buddhism. So these are quite personal to me. I'm sort of proud of them. This is, uh, I, yes, I could go on and on and I won't. So let's, uh, let's go on to the next and talk about charcoal. Charcoal is numbers. Don't be too overwhelmed. And I know this may not be so pertinent to many of you, including myself, because charcoal is very expensive. And we, I don't have the luxury of these beautiful pieces, almost uh, works of art. But starting at the bottom, there are three pieces. Let's stay on the left side. And we'll start at the bottom. And there are three pieces that are burning. And then we add a body piece, the dozumi, and then a gicho, a mallet head, and then a wadi gicho, a half divided uh, mallet head, and then a tubular one, a kudazumi, and then two. Eda zumi, then our ten zumi, and then our incense. Well, do zumi, gicho, wadi gicho, kuda zumi, and ten zumi. Those are five pieces, and they probably relate to the five elements. And we will go into that much more in the next lecture. At least that's the plan. Now, that's furo zumi, and now Sumi on the right is for Ro, and there is three, a Dozumi, Gicho, Wadi Gicho. So I'm not sure what all those added to, but Ro, of course, is a different story. These pieces of charcoal are the same length. Sorry, they're the same dimension, but they are different sizes. So there are five pieces of charcoal, not looking at the Edozumi, five pieces of charcoal, on three, which makes eight. And then there are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of charcoal. Seven on top of three. So the charcoal pieces relate to each other eight to ten. The Edizumi look like pine needles, and I think next to the Kudazumi, it's uh, wind in the pines. But going on to our next slide, which is incense. Yes, the Kanejaku above, the Kujira below, and there are two pieces of Byakudan, and the two pieces of Byakudan make up one sun. And so if you add all the pieces of the charcoal together, just the black charcoal pieces together. They almost relate to each other eight to 10, except that they are missing a little bit. And if we add one sun of the byakudan, the sandalwood, and if you can tally it, if you can reckon it, it's 2.5 blue 
through the side of the Nerico. And adding that to the char code, the length of the char code with incense relates eight to 10. Moving onward and downward, absolutely wonderful Natsume. Uh, it's the box has the signature of Hoon Sai and the uh, sign of Nakamura Sotetsu. I don't know, but it's a wonderful object of itself, Hira Natsume, and it has pine needles which have fallen, so that means the end of infinity, but there are pine cones and they have seeds. So it's a beginning and an ending, and a beginning. And then moving onward to the Khan and the Hibashi. If you unroll the Khan, they are the same length as the Hibashi. And if you look carefully, it's Kyusun Gobu. Nine five, nine five. The kan as rings are in, the hibashi straightened like that are yo. I think they're more closely associated, but th uh, that will do a non. So going on to the hibashi, these were uh, designed by Ho Sai. It's a little bit hard to see, but they have. Uh, grooves on them of seven, five, three, shichigo-san. And that is uh, in part a special holiday for the children, which is held in November. And November is the time for ginkgo nuts. And ginkgo nuts are very closely associated with Sotan, Riku's grandson. And so these silver knobs or finials or atama have a intimacy about them that you really need to know that Sotan is connected to that. And uh, children, children. And moving on, this, this one threw me on, well, let's stop for a moment here. And these are the shaku. You can see that the ones for row with the kua wooden handle Maybe they're not following the rules, but the uh, just above the Kanejaku Monosashi is a green bamboo hashi used in Kaiseki. It's the same length, nine five, not ten. Why is that? Maybe you can find out. And moving on. Now the teacher <laughs> says. Hold up the Hishaku like a mirror, the mirror gesture, Kagami Bishaku. Well, below that, uh, below the Hishaku, is a uh, mirror from a Shinto shrine from Ise. I purchased that when I was in Ise for my shrine uh, here in my home. And the diameter of the Hishaku, the go, the cup, is 1.5 sun kujira, meaning slightly larger, and the diameter, and these mirrors come in many, many, many different sizes. The one I happened to get was 5 point, sorry, 1.5 sun kane. So the mirror gesture may be more than just a mirror. Maybe it really is a mirror. And the mirror is more closely associated with Amaterasu, the sun goddess. And the mirror is only somewhat peripherally associated with Kannon, the goddess of mercy. And Kannon uh, is more associated with the moon. Well, the moon's reflection on water. There is a Sui. Getsu, water moon, kanno. And now, just, just for fun, the uh, Chawan. We're getting very near the end of, our, uh, of my lecture. This is a songbo. Uh, I acquired it quite a few years ago from a 
great dear friend in New York who is a Chinese antiquities dealer and I was his first customer. So you never know when you're gonna have uh, importance in somebody's life and vice versa. The diameter of the bowl is four sun kane and its height is two sun kane. And now if we could, I'm afraid we're going to uh, have to zip through these. Maybe we'll pick them up the next time. But let's, uh, this has become a standard. So uh, let us move down one, or I should say to our next slide, I'll briefly touch on them. Right, the binding should go around five times for the five things you shouldn't do. Don't kill, don't steal, don't drink too much, etc. There are two wits and they relate to each other eight to 10. All right, and next please, we'll see what comes up. Well, this one was another one that blew me away. away. Uh, the chakin, when you fold it, we had a glimpse of it last time, that when you fold it up to be the little square that it is, it turns out that it is a little square and it's exactly the distance between the thread and the end of the chasen. Remember how you, in uh, those of you who have practiced uh, uh, chasen kazari, you put the chasen on the chakin. Hi, let's move on. Right, the sensus, the ladies' fan on the right, men's fan, we'll say the teacher's fan, and then the chaku. That's a kane chaku. Yes, and next, magemono. Six sun for the mizusashi. The, the uh, diameter of the mizusashi is a little less than six sun kane. It's the lid that is six sun kane. It is allowed on traditional three by six tatami, it is allowed only six sun space to put the mizusashi in row. Think about that. The Kensi is five sun and it does fit inside the Mizusashi. It is a set height. And moving on, these are teasers. The, uh, we saw these last time and the uh, water ladle is uh, the same measurement. Let me catch up too. The water ladle diameter is 2.8 sun kujira, and the fire ladle, you scoop out the fire from the furo, this is for furo, it is to, uh, from the fold, from the fold of the uh, spoon where it's laid uh, at a 90, 90 degrees, uh, is also 2.8. So they, fire and water, relate to each other eight to 10 and onward. Right, and I think all of you who have practiced tea know this is the Koko Dana. Did you know that it was three shaku wide if laid side by side? And the legs, the full complete length of the legs is Sorry, I've got to get my notes here. It's 14 sun tall, which means it's the height of the hishaku ladle. And the shelves are square. And the uh, length of the long post is 8.8. .8. That's the full length, even, uh, even though the ends are hidden. And the upper, shorter posts are 5.5 sun kujira. kujira the wider one. Well, I think we've come to the end of a group. There's so many more to go on, uh, which I, I guess I go on too much, but uh, yes, I think we'll have to stop there. And uh, perhaps one last picture, and that's the very end. Tanya 
Valentine is our library. This incredible bowl scene, the scene, they're all four sun, they're three different potters, and they're all the same height, and they're all the same diameter. I'm sorry that uh, I go on and on, but uh, there's so much to share. So Anthony, maybe you could open up the world and we'll see if we have any questions. Yes, uh, the questions are slowly coming in, but uh, while they're coming in, maybe we can go around uh, your tea room. I, I see you have some dogu set up over there. Maybe there are things you can say about that. Well, our uh, I have here, because there's no room in my tokonoma, I actually have the kogo on a marvelous uh, kobuksa based on one of the earliest uh, designs of a mandala in Japan. And my tsukubai, chozubachi, and the lantern that I made, again with the wonderful help of Stephen Murphy and some stones, which we'll get into, I hope, the next time around. This is Sose Studio. A lot can happen there. And then the Dora and the Striker, the Chatsubo from Tamba. Guardian Lion, Karajishi, Koro, and this is the bell I mentioned earlier from Midera. And in the Tokonoma, you see my Tokonoma is somewhat improvised, but it works. In fact, this apartment, which is quite small, just seems to be built for tea, at least my tea. And my tables, that's the row hiding out under there. And it's 18 inches high. And the stools, which are made in North Carolina, they are 18 inches high. Do you see a pattern here? And then the daisu. Oh, we didn't even get to the plans. I think we're going to have to pick this up the next time. This is the take daisu and just uh, fill in a few little details. The, the width of the daisu, this is Rikyu's take daisu, is two shaku kujira by one shaku kujira. So it's two squares that are a shaku each. And the kaigu is not exactly centered, it's on the right side, the furo is on the left side in its own square. And there's Rikyu, Kutaniyaki, quite wonderful. And this place, uh, my tea room, is called Garando. Hope you don't get seasick. And here is the signboard I found on Gojo near Horikawa Dori, abandoned. Probably some Dorobo walked off with it. But uh, my room, that's a painting by Paul Nagano, a great and dear friend of many, many years. And that's the Tsukubai at, I should say, the Chozubachi at uh, Ginkakuji. Thank you, Sensei. Um, I think maybe it may be some people's uh, first time hearing about uh, the di the two different kani jaku or the two different shaku, the kani yeah. jaku and the kujira jaku. Yes. And so I think, um, yeah, th there's a couple of questions I'm trying to combine here, but um, I guess why are there two and why are both used in Chano Yu? Once I guess uh, in China, where a lot of Japanese culture began, that there were many size shaku. And uh, sort of like the history of our foot. 
<laughs> the measure the measuring foot but it it was based at least my understanding is that it was based on the size of the foot of the king and so measurements were all oh, higgledy piggledy i don't think i've ever used that expression in my life uh, and then eventually there was something called the bureau of standards and uh, those of you who live in america and are old enough to remember that every once in a while the government wants to change to centimeters to get rid of feet and yards which i've never understood them so eventually uh the japanese evidently got down to just two and they are so intimately uh, associated with each other that they relate eight to ten and weavers use the kujira chakra lacquerers use the kujira so they natsume the rikyu gata chu natsume that's actually 1.8 sun kujira but it's given in centimeters or in kanejaku so bamboo makers use the uh, kane jaku woodworkers carpenters seem to use that uh, i think i mentioned this the last time but uh, average tatami are three by six shaku kane but Kyoto size, which are larger, are 5 by 2.5 shaku kujira. So where did that come from? Well, tatami, the, the goza, the top, I don't think that's actually called the goza, we'll pretend it is, uh, that that's weaving. So, so that may be using the kujira jaku for weaving. The heady, we call it, well, me and a few others call the heady one sun kane, but in fact it's hachibu kujira. The fuksa, I have these out. Oh, this is a wonderful one. Uh, this is Shiotsuki Yaiko's design for the year of the rat, and this is based on Andes. So it's, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but absolutely wonderful. It's sort of Art Deco and uh, but you see the little rat, <laughs> they're everywhere. Uh, she had a sense of humor as well. Uh, I don't think anybody can really answer the question about why the shaku, but you understand that Chano Yu is an amalgamation of all the arts, all of the utensils, all of the tools, uh, the things that we need in life, and they are made by different artists and they use different materials and different measurements. The baleen was the origin of the kujira, the whale baleen, so they could go around things like we would use a tape measure. But almost everyone we think uses centimeters, but in fact the artists are probably using their traditional kujira when I, when I went around Kyoto, this was actually two, I cut it in half, easier to get through customs. We didn't do tea. We should be doing tea. I've got mine ready. Um, that I searched all over Kyoto, even Kyoto, the traditional culture center of Japan, to find a kujira bamboo, monosashi. They had tapes and they had fold outs and I said, I need the bamboo. So I'm going to go get my sweet and my tea. And Anthony, come with the questions. Uh, could you explain more about the relationship between the um, kakejiku cord being wrapped five times and the five Buddhist pre precepts? Oh, good. Uh, I was hoping somebody might pick that up. Um, Many shoguya may not know that the cord should go around five times, so I have to go get my chichi.
uh, I'll read it, but can you see it, Anthony? Yes, we can see it, Sensei. Good. Well, I'll read it, but I have it in my altar because it comes directly from Buddhism. If you uh, go kite five times around, go kite. Well, if you look up a number of dictionaries, Japanese dictionaries, Gokai, they give you these five precepts in Buddhism. Of course, it's different kanji. And it's Fu Setsu Sho, Fu Chu To, Fu Ja In, Fu Mo Gyo, Fu Ongju. Doesn't sound terribly restrictive to me because I don't know Japanese that well. I know yes, some of you are cringing, but I, after a bite or two, I will read the English. Japanese is such for me that you have to really know, you have to see the kanji in order to know what they're talking about. No destroy life. No steal rob. No wrong desire, no false word, no drink alcohol. <laughs> There's an exclamation after that one. So that's why it goes around five times. So that when you're, when you're closing up your scroll and you're wrapping the cord around it, think about that. Not, not just wrapping it around five times, and then tuck it a little bit. Know that fancy knot they taught you in uh, Jiku Kazari? That's when you're doing Jiku Kazari. Don't fuss around with it, because you can hurt the uraginu on the back, the very, very fine silk that wraps the uh, outer part of the scroll. Was that an answer? <laughs> yes, Sensei. Thank Hi. you. Um, uh, so I think uh, one other one was about the Kagami Bishaku is, is um, the relationship between Kagami Bishaku and, and measurements. It, um, I think uh, the question came from Nan Urasenke. Uh, he, I think he's assuming that we know more about that than, but I don't think so. So I think it's, it's Sensei's uh, thoughts here. So, but please, uh, could you comment more about that, Sensei? Well, I discovered that uh, in this time that I was preparing these uh, talks, lectures, uh, my sharing my thoughts on things in tea. And I began to really ponder about the mirror, the Kagami Bishaku. When, when you go to the Tokonoma and you hang a uh, picture of the rising sun, the rising sun is a mirror. Shinto is a mirror. And so if it's a mirror, well, what am I mirroring? If, if I'm sitting, making tea, looking north, Kitamuki, I'm looking north, Tokonoma's in the north, and I put up a mirror, well, who's in the mirror? Well, who was up there? Was that Dharma? Am I Dharma? Am I Kannon? Kannon is up there. She's in the north, protecting the year of the rat. I think we need more prayers to Kannon, make a nicer rat. We've got a ways, ways to go. So maybe I'm Kannon, maybe I'm, maybe I'm uh, Dharma. I'm me. And in Shinto, same as in Buddhism, the in and yo world, the, the yo world is the mirror. It's not real, it's not substantial, it's only an illusion, it is non-corporeal. This, this physical world, this is the in world. And so when you look in the mirror, well, who is it? I know you just pick it up and, and but I said, wait a minute, because uh, my 
Kamidana is up above my Butsudan. Uh, yes. I, I'll, oh, well, I'll measure that. I measure everything, but it never occurred to me, well, maybe I should be measuring everything. And so when I put those three Timoku bowls together, and, <laughs> and they were the same height by different potters, you know, do they have a rule book that all these bowls, remember those are the real bowls, that Sung bowl, that's a thousand years old, coming from Song period. And it's still for Sun. What is that all about? I mean, I may give the impression that I know this is true. I'm not absolutely certain about that at all. I, you look at this and you look at that, you say, well, they're the same measurement, but they're different sizes. The, the Natsume and the, the uh, Futaoki. This is a sweets board from uh, Urasenke, again with five corners. They cut the corner off. So when you're uh, using your kaishi, oh, I meant to get this right at the beginning. So when you wipe the tips of the hashi from the kashibachi, do that corner. So this is more auspicious. Right, I have two pieces of kaishi. I'm waiting for the next question, Anthony. So I'm uh, filling the void we, here. We have uh, one, uh, a guest would like to unmute themselves and answer because I, I didn't translate the question so well. Uh, please okay. I'll just free this after this. I'll just show and tell and say, how do these two relate to each other? Now, some of you, because you know me, you know how they relate. Yes, Anthony. Question. Uh, somebody, uh, Maya. Oh, sorry. Let me unmute the person. I made it so people could not unmute. Um, allow people to unmute. Sorry about that. Uh, and I will. Okay. Uh, Looks like I'm unmuted. Hi. Thank you very much for your for your talk. And I just wanted to ask a little bit further about the uh, Kakejiku cord. Um, so I understand that there are five Buddhist precepts and there are also some other numbers of precepts. For example, there's the 16 Bodhisattva precepts. So I've just... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And 48 of, uh, of Amida, which... Yes, and, and also many much longer lists of, you know, hundreds of precepts. But um, so I'm interested, is this a connection that you put together when you saw the five wrappings or is there some historical relationship here that that no, it's only here uh, i've been deeply involved in tea and and other things i used to teach country western line dancing at showa joshi daigaku but that's another story maybe you could do that sometime <laughs> <laughs> i was younger then um, yes the when I saw Gokai, Gokai, uh, five times around, I do this with everything. It's, it's not that it's only just this that I focused on, but I thought about the cord going around and some go all the way around and some don't. And so um, I thought Gokai, well, go goes a big number. If you, if you look up in any kind of source, material about numbers, there are 500 variations on five. It's just incredible, uh, almost exhausting. Uh, but it's very important to us, the five, and our five senses. But I thought, go kai, I wonder if that is just wordplay on something. I love wordplay. And when I opened up, I think it, I think it was uh, Ken Kyusha, Gokai. Just see if there's a word. The five Buddhist precepts, don't do this and don't do that. So that was the first thing that popped up. That's how I went to that. Now, I don't know that they 
start it out and say, oh, let's make this go around five times because it's the Buddha's precepts. I don't think that at all. Somehow, scrolls can be quite tiny and they can be quite huge, but somewhere in between to get to be six feet long in our, in our sort of normal tokonoma, it doesn't get that fat. But nonetheless, no matter what it is, I saw that the, most of them were going around five times. And since the scroll is Buddhist in origin, primarily, you know that Urasenke would prefer dokuza dai yu ho, hondai mu ichibutsu, and so on and so on and so on because of the five characters. And they are Buddhist. Cha Zen Ichi Mi. Zen is Buddhist. And probably more so if we ever get to Ginkakuji. Um, so the five times around, to me, it just seems natural that it's related to Buddhism and go Kai five times and the five Precepts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who whom am I speaking with? Uh, this is Maya Wender. Oh, Maya. Yes, yes. I know. I we met. met I have met many here. years ago. Yeah. Nice to see Just you. Just out of college. Congratulations on your work too, Maya. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we have some tea? Again, people are more than welcome if they are comfortable to join on, on video. I'll be in gallery mode from now on. So uh, you will be shared on the, I guess on the video, <laughs> but only to the people that are in the yo and <laughs> in and yo tiers. Um, so, yeah. Oh, we Susan. No, kind of embarrassing to broadcast my whisk noise, so I'm going to mute my... Oh, whisk noise, sara sara. It's the noise, not the action. Mori-sensei said it was the sound that uh, the wind makes blowing through the reeds along the river. So if everyone has their bowl, uh, Anthony, can you open me up to the world or do I have to do that? You would have to do that and there should be a button towards the there. top of your screen that says gallery, gra gallery view, I believe. Yes. Oh, and I see the bigger the, bigger the screen, the, the more people there. Hello, right. there's Adam, hi. Oh, and Ara, and Susan, <laughs> Toka, <laughs> how wonderful to see you. Hi. Gosho bani tashimasu. So my bowl, I, it's American. It's by Ben Owen, who is a potter in North Carolina. And he, uh, this was probably made about, oh, maybe 50 years ago. I'm not really sure. But he was, says that uh, in his uh, biography that he was interested in Chinese wares. It's obviously stoneware. And uh, and you do know that this is not the important part. 
That's secondary. The important part is right there to stop the ground up leaves, not powder, but more like coffee grounds, that they get stopped right there. So you whisk it up and carefully sip and the tea particles get stopped there. So that's the important part right in there. The songbo is buried in the koda, so I should have had it on hand. You can't have the most important things in your life just sitting around. No, yes, you can. <laughs> so you must have, there's Maya, Maya, sorry. Uh, I think, uh, well, one thing I would like to do is just uh, extend a thank you to Tanya Valentine, who's been behind the curtain doing all the slide work. So I'd like to say thank you to Tanya and uh, for her hard work. Uh, the only other question, I believe, there was some overlap on the Kane and Kujira Jaku, which if anybody has more specific questions that I wasn't able to uh, to capture with my translation and combination, feel free to send Alan Sensei a message. In the invite link that we sent recently, we had his, his email address, so uh, I apologize if my translation was, was poor. But the only other question I think I saw was some, um, was asking for your interpretation on uh, Chazen Ichimi. Mm. When I first heard it, I thought, yeah, it's pretty bitter, but uh, that's not what it's all about. Um, I, when I started tea, I was 32, and uh, I thought I'd pretty much done what there was to do in life. And then I went to Expo 70 in Osaka, Japan, it was a pretext to go there. Uh, start of July, end of August, two months at 495. Well, it was 1970. And uh, so it seemed like a time to go. I was already an adult and had done what I could do in life and thought, I'll, I'll just go. And I liked it. And I got back to New York. I was living in Manhattan working at Japan House Gallery as their first receptionist. Call on me, I can do almost anything, I think. Uh, and then my life in New York came to an end. I went, I go to Japan. So I just went, no end in sight, and started almost immediately in 1972 to uh, start tea. It was a year of the rat. So it's easy to remember that. And I, got really interested in tea through Zen. It was uh, a few books in the, uh, the living in New York and looking for Japanese restaurants. And uh, there were maybe this many in all of Manhattan that I could afford. Uh, and I just always loved Japan and Zen flesh, Zen bones, uh, the gateless barrier or the barrierless gate or whatever it was just, it, it was already a part of me. It, it wasn't that I thought I knew more about Zen than I actually really did. Uh, that takes experience. Uh, but I didn't know about tea. And so when I started, I, I had been at tea with uh, Rand Castile and uh, Sandra, his wife, in New York, uh, and went to the uh, Chana Youth Center there, and eventually, when I was living in Japan, I started to study tea. And I thought I couldn't do it, but I tried and tried and tried. And those of you who put your efforts into what you do, you know that you put your efforts into what you do, and it's hard work. And these two people have been working so hard to get me out there. And I, you know, at 82, I feel as though I am doing pretty good to just be sitting here. So um, without getting too maudlin, uh, to me, they're almost the same thing. 
I know that's probably a cop out, but it's so curious that when we know that Rikyu was Koji, he was a lay priest. Well, his name was Eki, and that means that he probably knew something about the I Ching, the Eki Kyo. And I have been interested in the Eki Kyo for a long, long, long time and didn't know how complicated, how involved it was in tea. And the uh, Hakke Bon, the eight uh, trigrams tray that we use, that's, that isn't uh, Zen. It's any number of things. It's uh, Taoism and uh, certainly Yin and Yo and anyway. So to me, it, is, it has become a revelation of whatever this is, as troubled as this, this can be. Uh, it's given me, to be very blunt, a raison d'etre, a reason to be, a reason to get up in the morning. And, uh, and <laughs> yes, somebody's just sent me a, sent me a note. Uh, that uh, about Kane Wadi. Kane Wadi. And Kane Wadi is, uh, it was nicely written too. I won't identify you. Yeah, the divisions of this, the divisions of this. And Riku really went into it. And you take three lines and three lines and you put them together. There is no way I have gotten into that field of the 64, the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching, except this is doubled. This is doubled, right? Two layers, Nimai. So two, four, six, eight. No, wait a minute. I don't count that way. Sorry. Help me, <laughs> Anthony. Anthony's my math man. So two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. There are 64 layers here. There are 64 hexagrams in the I Ching. Now you tell me. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Uh, I mentioned last time about Wake Sejaku, that um, instead of going one, two, three, four, I usually do Wake Se. Jaku, and then Mok Ka Do Gong Sui. Right, five folds. But in Xin folding, those of you who have gotten to Xin, you start off with the eight directions. You've made eight directions, right? It's one, now it's two. And it's and so on and so on. So you're working with eight already. Looks like four, but it's eight. Somebody's got a baby. And then, and then in Xing, when you're folding it up, I have to go the other way. You always have to start from one and fold them up five times. And my five, maybe you'll like it too. I have to start. Happened to him, huh. Sensei. It seems like we have lost your audio. Uh, maybe a battery on the wireless mic may have gone, but you know, it, it really just ended right at 108 minutes when your battery died. So I feel like that, that might be a sign. Uh, so, Sensei, even though you can't talk back, maybe we can all join together for a quick bow and uh, give you a thank you. Um, sensei, arigato gozaimashita. Arigato gozaimashita. Everyone, thank you for coming. I hope to see you in uh, three weeks, I think, our next show. So, arigato. Bye. 
Again, you can send Sensei some questions uh, about T to his email or directly to us on the Patreon site. So, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.